being very transparent, you know, sex stopped mm -hmm. because she's so stressed out. And it, then it becomes a trickle down effect. You know, how come if we can't do this and now I'm stressed and and now I, and, and now the baby's crying and now the baby's doing this and, and it just becomes just a compounding interest kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out how you're going to manage those yeah, things. Nice. So, we have some special guests in the building with us today. Well, not actually in the building. You know, we actually are online. But anyway, I like saying that. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to continue in this marriage work series, because as you know, I'm a big advocate for healthy marriages and relationships. So today's guests, you're going to be in for a treat. They are the founders of CYL Entertainment, and it's an online home where they share themselves in their marriage. A marriage which, despite uh, us being chiefly opposite in so many ways, has lasted over a quarter century. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate that. We're going to talk about that as well. Okay. They believe in lifelong love and they invite married couples, long term partners and singles to join them as they live their truth, learn from experiences and grow into their best selves. Now, here's one that I really like right here because I was watching this show the other day. We're going to get into that, too. Not only do they share their love for uh, for love for each other, but also their love of music. He is a professional DJ and has a live stream broadcast on Twitch called Heartbeats, where he plays slow jams, cool out talk and laugh about life and relationships with their Twitch community and members. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Clarence and Yolanda Lewis. How are y'all doing this morning? We're doing great. We're doing well. Thank, Thank you so you. much for that introduction. Yes. It's hard to, I, I'm, I'm listening to those things and like, who are those people? <laughs> they sound really cool. Because <laughs> y'all are. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, for thank sure. You. And I follow Clarence on Twitter. Right. So that's how this whole thing came about. I, I saw a couple of your comments on Twitter and I said, you know, let me follow this guy because, you know, he has some good engaging stuff. You ask some solid questions. I, You know, I like to, I like Twitter is like a second home. I tell her that all the time. It's, it's, it's I mean, if you if you can't find me in the house, look for me on Twitter because you'll find me. Um, and I followed you and I said, Oh, you know, I wonder if if he would be interested in doing some some collaboration, some cross some cross work. And uh, I reached out to you and I appreciate the response. Yes, for sure. I Yeah, I love the content as well. Let's jump in today's segment because I want to talk about, of course, with marriage and because I'm, I'm all about promoting healthy marriages. How did you both meet or who has the most accurate story? So who want to tell the story? The most the most accurate story is, is perfect. My story. You want her story or you want the truth? <laughs> I want the truth. <laughs> is the truth her story so we met in college yes we yes. met in college um she, uh, i'm a couple years ahead of her she had um recently crossed uh her sorority uh she's a six sigma gamma row i was already uh greek i was i'm a five, five beta sigma so we were talking in the in the SGA office. That's yeah, really that's how it happened. We were talking at our at our PWI. So we were talking in the SGA office, and I said, "Um, I, I said, well, guys, I gotta go. I got a class I gotta go to." And she said, "Me too." And I said, "Oh, look, well, you know, if we go in the same direction, let's walk." And we started walking, and I said, "Where are you going?" She said, "I'm going to your class. We're in the same class." I was like, "How do I not know this?" And she said, "Cause you're never here." So. <laughs> But we're in the same class. So and, you know, and from there, things just kept going and, and blossomed yeah. from there. Yeah. Uh, the irony is the name of that class was Sociology 353 Marriage and the Family. Really? Even though neither one of us were thinking about marriage Not at the or time. family Not at the time. time. Not at the time. At the time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Interesting how things come together. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Well, let's jump into your book because I, I want to talk about that. Uh, the Rhythm of Love, 25 Things That 25 Years of Marriage Taught Us. Congratulations on the 25 years because we need your wisdom in today's culture. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Coming up on 27 years now. 27. <laughs> Look yeah. at that. Next, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday will be 27 years. Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you for staying the course. What both inspired you to write the book? 
So that's you included in your introduction. We have a stream on Sunday nights, a live stream where he plays slow jams and we just kick it with our with our um, followers and audience about relationship matters, what we saw on the internet that week, et cetera, et cetera. And um, our 25th anniversary came during the pandemic lockdown kids are home from school we couldn't really make a big plan for such a a, a major milestone of marriage uh, so we decided to share it with our streamer with our guests on the stream and uh we just said okay what can we do how about 25 things that we've learned in 25 years of marriage more of a just a tongue-in-cheek kind yes. of let's have some fun with the audience yes. and things like that just tell us tell the audience a little bit about ourselves right. or about our marriage and um uh, it blew up it was the most well-attended stream and uh people were calling us uh days after saying Please, you got to do more. We want to hear more. There's not enough of this talk about what it takes to make marriage work and et cetera, et cetera. And so that is how the book was spawned. We talked to a couple of author friends of ours, like, could we actually put this into writing? You know, neither I, one of us I thought mean, of ourselves as, as authors. Not writers. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but there, there was, we got a lot of encouragement and support um, from them, from our fo um, followers online, from our family. And, you know, it was a pandemic. So everybody was doing something new and different and starting podcasts and all these things. So, so we said, why not? Yeah. Why not? Mm. Eight months later, there was it, it was done. <laughs> was so wow. Eight months later, it was done. Yes. Wow. That's beautiful. So from the book, uh, The 25 Things, can you give us one, I don't want to get away the whole book, but can you give us maybe one thing that you feel that uh, every married couple, like which one stands out of the 25 things to you the most? I'll let you go first. You let me go first? I'm going to let okay. you go first. All right. I, I don't, we had several chapters about communication. Because our thing is, people would tell you, you know, communication is so important, communication is so important in the marriage, but never really get down to the, the brass tacks of how you implement that in your marriage from day to day. Um, and we had to really learn to allow that space for open, frank conversation because there's going to be sometimes things you have to say to your spouse that you know um, could hurt them, could not maybe not go over very well. Um, but, oh, you know, our thing was we would go to the K&W cafeteria in, uh, in Durham, North Carolina. That's where we were living at the time. That's where we were living at the time, very early in our marriage. And that's how you knew that the person had something they needed to get off their chest. <laughs> We'd be like, let's go to K&W. Because <laughs> neither, neither, neither of us is a um, explosive. So right. we're not going to get in public and behave the, badly. Yeah. So it was a it, it put a little bit of pressure to make sure that you listened and responded. Yes. And you know, it was a tool we use. We don't need it now. We don't have to go to restaurants now. Yeah. But then that, that was a nice tool. It keeps you keeps you from getting too into your emotions. Let's just have an actual discussion. Getting setting ego aside, setting just opinion aside. And, you know, we really learn how to use conflict to get to know each other better. Because the reason we're coming at this from different angles or the reason we don't um, agree on a certain, you know, way to do things or how we're going to, you know, make a decision or whatever the, the thing was, is because of our different backgrounds, our different lifestyles growing up, you know, what we saw from our parents or didn't see. And so it's an opportunity to say, I feel this way because X, Y, Z, you know, my parents never, we never had a time where our parents sat together and listened to us. So, you know, it triggers me when you shut me down, that kind of thing. So, you know, we use conflict that way. And, and this is a learning 
over the full 25 years because we still have to go back to those basics um, over and over again. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. You, you just don't have to go to the hall anymore. You're just in your bedroom. Right, 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 right. exactly. You're exactly right. Exactly. In the bathroom, that's the place we talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the bathroom is a place we talk a lot. Jeez. Oh, okay. So, so the bathroom is y'all spot then. So, yeah, the yeah. It, now it's become our spot. Yeah, <laughs> it has become our spot. Oh my God, that's that's funny. Yeah, that's one thing about married couples. At first, it's like you had your little privacy when you were single. You get married, all of a sudden, I was like, our <laughs> <laughs> privacy is locked behind the the sm- into the smallest room in the house. The smallest room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Let's let's get a little transparent. Uh, Tell us a tough time you experienced in your marriage and how did you get through it? So I think a tough time that we had was when we learned my daughter got had an autism diagnosis. We I tend not to say she has autism because that's not what the word says. The word says we are healed. So Mm -hmm. I tend not to say those things. I just tend to say they have diagnosed her with this because that's what they say she has. So it's, it's 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 it sounds like a distinction without a difference, but it means something to me. So it's not claiming that thing. It's just saying this is what they say she has. I don't say she has it. So going through that process uh, as um as a parent who has expectations and as a parent who who has goals for what they anticipated their lives would be like this, this threw an absolute monkey wrench in, in, in us on an individual level and on a marital level, because it, 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 it heaped an enormous amount of stress on us individually. And, you know, there were times as we were going through this and we're still going through it. So let's not say that we, but early on, that I wasn't sure we were going to make it because, you know, everything being very transparent, you know, sex stopped Mm -hmm. because she's so stressed out. And then it becomes a trickle down effect. You know, how come if we can't do this and now I'm stressed and, and now, and and now the baby's crying and now the baby's doing this and, and it just becomes just a, compounding interest kind of situation Mm -hmm. and you got to figure out how you're going to manage those things so what we ended up what we ended up doing we ended up having to move because we had to go to a different location that had better services to support her and that move kind of gave us a new start it kind of gave us a place to to start over again and we got and we had another we were having another baby during that move so everything kind of allowed us to to take a step back and it 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 only reared its head every now and then over the over the next 22 years (laughs) and it's and every now and then it still rears its head so but we are we are unified against this thing. You know, we see so many couples that don't survive special needs children. Uh, I think that, I think Yolanda said, you know, it's over 50%. So we don't know why those people had their issues, but we were determined that we were here and we were in this thing together. And that was the bottom line. So we were going to stay the course and, and, and get through it and not be disrespectful or mean or rude to each other and things like that. Even, uh, even though we didn't always agree. Right. And, and give each other grace that even though we, you know, disagreed on a tactic, you know, should we let her cry it out? Should we go for her? Should we, you know, should we be more disciplinarian? Should we be more, you know, relaxed and, and come at, you know, come at the, some of the behavior challenges um, a different way. Oh, okay. Um, just to make sure my voice is coming through, but yeah, uh, uh, you know, we had to remember that both of us have the best interest for our family at heart, and you know, at the in the at the bottom line, at the end of the day, 
we both want what's best. No one's trying to control the other for nefarious means. We're just trying to do our very best in a tough situation. And I just want to add this for our people in the autism community, um, because the way we talk about autism in our families, our daughter is very severely affected by some of the, be the behavioral and communication challenges. And she has a comorbidity of an intellectual disability. So for us, our challenges are, you know, very, uh, they loom large. Um, but that's not to say that every family that receives a diagnosis of, of autism is going to have our same challenges. And I just want to say that for um, all of our autistic people out there, we respect that it's a part of who you are. Um, but we're only speaking of our specific challenges and our specific situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a big thing for us not to get angry at each other because we want, we were trying to achieve the same thing just in different ways. So maybe we'll try some of what you're thinking this time and we'll try some of what you're thinking in another situation because there's no manual. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so that was definitely, it continues to be a major challenge with our children. And it's not just our 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 oldest, who is the, the first one, our daughter is um, the one who was diagnosed with autism, but it's um, our son too, is not a typical kid either. And so, you know, he doesn't have a diagnosis or anything, but there are a lot of times when we um, feel differently about <laughs> how he should be raised. And I think right. that's been the biggest challenge throughout our whole marriage. We wrote a chapter in the book about it. It's called My Little Love. And it's, it is, it's about learning to raise the child that you got, not the child that, that you, you wanted you or that you prayed for. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm glad y'all put that out there because okay. that even add more value to, to people purchasing a book. Yeah. <laughs> because I have two kids with with autism, right? So I I totally get it. Uh, oh, that's been diagnosed with autism, right? right. And, they, and they're little kids. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had to reframe my verbiage. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Clarence. Yeah, you I got, got it. it. You got it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I get it, but they're on a smaller level, like they're three and four. So we, when my wife and I, and of course, just quick backstory, the, the, the listeners, the Brave Hearts community, they, they know the story, but when we remit, when I remarried, uh, my wife and I, uh, we had two kids together. Okay. And both of those boys were diagnosed with autism. So that presented a, a, a issue within itself. So hearing you both talk, I'm like, I get it. Um, so yeah, that's it. You get it, you get it. especially in those early years. Yes. There's way more questions than there are answers <laughs> yes. from, from, from the professionals between yourself, your family. I don't know if you have autism in your family, but you know, we didn't have anybody who had any had any kind of experience. Right. And so it was just us trying to make it work. And you you think, oh, let me go to this parent support group. And that's not always a good fit, you know, for what you're dealing with. And so the church is telling you, just pray harder. They're going to be here. It's your faith. It's you your lack faith. your faith. You don't have to faith. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Sometimes we just got to do better in the church. Yeah. But I, understand. <laughs> I, I, I totally understand. Uh, yeah. Because, and, and Yolanda, to your point, because I do have a family member who, who has a child that was diagnosed with autism. And it was like a surprise to all of us. So then here I come, get remarried and have right. back to back kids diagnosed autism. I'm like, uh, so here it is. We taking these DNA tests like we're doing. My wife is a nurse, so right. she's like on top of everything. Everything, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Reading the research and everything. Right. Yes. I got one of those. <laughs> yeah. I got one of those researchers. I got yes, one of those I'm right sure. there. I'm in public health. So same thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Same thing. What I said was, I really do appreciate you allowing us to be on your platform. You know, we when we started this journey, we, we started identif identifying as too strong a word. We started researching and looking for people who were doing similar kinds of things because our people were telling us 
how needed it was and how spare, you know, how sparse the, the, the landscape was for finding this kind of information. So, you know, I found you on Twitter. I started listening to your uh, a couple of your things when I cut the grass. It gives me good gives me good conversation while I'm cutting the grass. And um, you you had a show with BJ, uh, who's is your friend, right? Shout out to BJ. Yeah, I met him by find, I found this podcast one day and started listening to him. So okay, yeah. <laughs> so I, although I didn't a hundred percent agree with the some of the things he was saying, what I said to Yolanda was. At least he makes sense. At least he's connecting his dots together and you see how he got to where he got. So I'm OK. I, I can live with with with, with that type of, of dialogue. But we were so we started doing our research, looking for people who we could connect with, who we could share our book with, but also collaborate with to kind of understand this environment. And it's so many people out here putting out this kind of content and if anybody is saying that it's sparse it's only because they're not looking because if they just i mean the way the algorithm and i I use that with quotes the algorithm all you got to do is start with one or two and next thing you know you'll be recommended for so many more and you know that's kind of what's happened to us we've been on you know a few different podcasts and a few different people who like yourself we did not know at all until we until started we looking. started looking and saw your yeah. name and said, "Hey, you know, we think we could be, we can contribute to his community and with with and some of the things we, and vice versa." So yeah. that's how we got here. Oh, I love it, man! I love hearing those testimonies. Yolanda, is something that you want to say? Oh, I just wanted to add that I am elated that there is this much content out there, especially within the Black community with us talking about what it takes to make relationships last, uh, that it is possible that you can start again, even though the first time did not turn out the way you wanted, that there's still room to learn and to grow and to unlearn some of the baggage that we bring in from how, you know, the Black Black husbands and wives have had to respond to things based on the trauma that they experience in their life outside of the relationship. And we've grown up seeing that. And it's just so heartening to see us unlearn those things, learn what works, you know, apply scripture in a balanced way. If you're, if, you know, for those of us who are Christians, um, instead of a legalistic way, yeah. Um, and you know, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited that we've entered this space and we see so much richness here. Yes. And yeah. the one thing, cause people, they start to downplay podcasts and I, and I don't want to get too far off topic, but since we're here, let's talk about it. <laughs> since we're here. Yeah. Since we're here, we're kicking it, right? Yeah. There, there was a lady I had on my show, uh, Tanisha talk, shout out to her. She's a YouTuber. And we did a show called change the algorithm. And it's basically just like you said, Clarence, we have to change what we see if we start clicking because people, oh, I don't see healthy relationships. I was just on the my wife and I was just on the interview last night and we talked about this very thing. And I said that people find what they want. The issue with when people say that they can't find healthy relationships, what they're saying is they don't look like Jay-Z and Beyonce. Right. They they want the they want the glitz and the glam. They want the seven house mansion marriage. They don't want to put the marriage together. My mentor, he always told me, he said, "Great marriages aren't found; they're built." Amen. That's good. That's good. That's yeah. That's That's weird. So a lot of people don't want to lay that foundation. They want. uh, They talk about I don't want to build a bear man and all this other stuff. I get it, but. People aren't willing to lay brick by brick to build something beautiful. They want it already made. They want it. Yes, now. they want an Instagram ready. Come on, we can just start taking our photos. <laughs> look at everything we have. Look at what we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's yeah. so much behind that that people, like you said, don't want to do the building first. Yeah, they don't. I think uh, we wrote it. I think we wrote a chapter in our book <laughs> that talked about that. That talked about. Uh, marriage people only letting you see what they want you to see mm-hmm. in their relationships and that is not 
that's not often the, the the true essence of their relationship. It is just they they they're showing you just the outside. And I don't disagree with just showing the outside. A lot of stuff we need to keep in house, <laughs> discuss amongst ourselves as per Kiki Palmer. Kiki, Kiki Palmer. Palmer's he could have kept that indoors. I had no problem with his. I had no problem problem with his per, with, with his per, position. It just should have been a text as opposed to a post. Or just wait till she gets home. Or yes, I mean they need to, that's something they really need to talk about and come to a a, a place together of agreement. Poor yeah. fella, not try to just getting dragged all around the internet. Every receipt, every receipt is rolling out. Yeah, and he had to shut down his Instagram. But anyway, the point it, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> marriage takes works work behind the scenes and we don't know what it took looking at any successful marriage whether it's what beyonce it to get there right but, or whether it's us We're dealing with on a regular basis yeah, yeah. whether it's them yeah. or whether it's us you don't yeah. know what what yeah. they had to, what they had to work through mm, yeah. that's right can you, continue, can you continue to work through every day yes every day marriage every has day. to be intentional every morning you got to be intentional every day because uh, and my mentor, I love him to death. He he told me because uh, he was discipling me for a while. He said disciples aren't mass produced; they are handcrafted. Who? So, these are, are facts. He dropping. He, he dropping some gems on you, yeah. sir. <laughs> Man, right. Same thing with marriages. The problem a lot of times with marriages are they're mass produced. They aren't handcrafted. Right. So that mean that we have to do life together with other couples community. Right. We don't right. have community anymore. Mm-hmm. So, so that's true. that's the issue is that we aren't willing to. And again, marital issues aren't for everybody. But if there are struggles, you can have somebody that you're connected to who has your best interest. That's not going to put you on blast, but say, how can we get through this together? Yep. Correct. Yep. Correct. There it is. Yeah. I want to discuss, I want to ask this question. How do we promote healthy marriages in today's culture where everything is about me and not we? Live it out. Walk it out. I mean, what does the Bible say? That that your fruit shows who you, they will know you by your fruit. fruit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to blast it. You don't have to um, be... You don't have to have a platform where you're doling out all this advice, but you're living it out from day to day. And the people that, you know, you come across um, will see that and um, be able to be transparent when the time, you know, is right. If, you know, if a couple comes to you uh, expressing, you know, difficulty, <laughs> you know, it's the worst thing to act like you got it all together and oh, I couldn't understand it. Right, I, I, you know, worse. but you know, it's so so good to share with them that yeah, we've been there. Yeah, we've been to that place where we didn't think we were going to make it, and we were making our you know having thoughts of making plans to leave and those kind of things. Um, um, and so that that's pretty much what I have to say is that you know, walking it out is so important. Walking it out to be an example for our kids as well. Um, it's so time out for the platitudes and the the these big statements that sound good, but how do I break it down and live that in my life from day to day? Because there was one thing that I, I was talking about the other day um, when we were on, my wife was on a, a video call. I was saying that single and shout out to my single people. Shout out, you know, I got love. I got followers that's that's single. Shout out to y'all. But I will say the only issue with that is singles say what they're gonna do when they get married. And I'm like, I don't know. They don't know. Don't, don't say that. Don't don't so so to other people, they're making it look like I'm gonna be this amazing husband or wife, which is very true, which things you can do, but don't just throw it out. When I get married, I'm going to have sex 17 times a day. I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I blow his mind. and I... Life hasn't hit it's... you yet, honey. Life <laughs> hasn't hit you yet. It's, it's, that is that 
dating talk that I don't have any other responsibility but to take care of me. So I got all this time to put it on you morning, noon, <laughs> and night. But when you have the responsibilities of life and the, you know, the mundane day to day, I just think it's a different, yeah. it's a different experience. I think it's easy to say those kinds of things and to behave those kinds of ways when you don't have the, the pressure of longevity mm. you know that too you know yolanda and i have talked about so many people who we know who dated for a long time and got married and then the marriage didn't last very long or or, or, well, or even yeah, lived yeah. together and then the marriage doesn't last very long and i said and, and, and i always tell her it's because marriage marriage puts a a little bit of a pressure on you think of, it it it, it the concept of not being able to untangle yourself quite so easily as I'm going to just leave and I'm going to walk out this door. You know, with marriage, it's a little bit more necessary in order to untangle yourself from this person. And that puts a little bit of pressure on you. And some people lean into that pressure and some people shy away from it. And when you say things like, this is all the stuff that I'm going to do, it's, it's an armchair quarterbacking. That's what it is. Armchair quarterbacking because nothing coming at you when you're in that pocket and the, and that and that rush is coming at you. It's a different experience than it is to to watch it on television or even to play it on Madden. So I mean, I, I but I tell people. So we've had dinner with couples who younger couples who I didn't even realize that we were being men, we weren't being mentors. Mentors is I think is a little is bit more active term. <laughs> but who we were being role models for that. We didn't even know we were being role models for them. We were just living our lives, but they get married and they call us up and they say, Hey, can we have dinner? Or can we, and we sit down and we talk and we say things to them. Like, you, you know, the things that you despise, the things that you, well, no, we won't call it despise. The thing that bothers you right now about this woman or about this man, do not think that getting married is going to subtract from those things. It is going to exponentially multiply those things. So, you know, those are things that, you know, when you're dating, you can brush them under the rug. Ah, oh, you know, he doesn't do this or she doesn't do that, but it's not that big of a deal. In five years, of every day not doing that thing that you that you didn't like to them for them not do, it it becomes just it amplifies it amplifies and you, and you and just all, going crazy. It's all you can see, <laughs> you're going <laughs> crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I know. You, <laughs> um, they're not doing what you want them to do. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I tell people that marriage is a mirror. All marriages is a reflect. They just they just got this mirror up to you, and they should look. This is you. Yep. In case you didn't know, because yep. when you're single, and, and I say this a lot, when you're single, when you eat, everybody eat. When you go to sleep, everybody go to sleep, right? <laughs> everybody is just you. Yeah, it's just you. <laughs> when you get married, that whole dynamic change. Yes, um, every single thing you want to, you want you you think you want, you want to purchase, you want to you know plan for. You got to go. Two people now have to come on the same page, and it's it's so much easier said than done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to know: is there any kind of correlation between? Because to me, I believe marriage is the ultimate team sport. Okay. I wonder if there's some kind of correlation with people who grew up playing sports, understanding the team concept. I wonder if they have like a higher success rate in marriages. That's, the, that's a good. That's a study. Question. That sounds like that's that sounds question. like a study. That, that, come, that's a, that's and, and check this out. That's revelation. I just got that. Yeah, I, I just came to you just now. I yeah, that, that's not in my notes. Researcher. We'll put Sean and Yolanda together, and y'all research this thing. I, I, I'll type it up and post it on the internet. I'm a tech guy, so that's what I do. Ooh. So you guys can do the research. Write the book. I see a book. I see a book. <laughs> I see a book. Sean and Yolanda getting down when, so, when the rush is on. When the rush is on. <laughs> That that is a good question, uh, you know. And there's other, you know, things that you went through your childhood that might impact. Were you the eldest child who was used to being kind of the boss of the the other siblings? You know, were the were the, the youngest who felt like no one ever listened to you and you all got all the hand me downs? 
you know, these are the things that you bring right into that marriage that you didn't even know you were carrying. Yes. So instead of being like, I'm going to sex him up all day and cook him everything, he, all the flavors, he going to get it all, he going to, you know, he going to be weak every night. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about what you gonna heal from. What you going? What you gonna deal with? Who is? What is the character that you're bringing to the relationship? And the other things come because you know people. You're feeling the person. You know how to love them the way they need. They feel love. You know according to their love language. And yes. you know you aren't blaming them for things that happened to you in your past or or conflating you know, what they want with some, what somebody, how somebody treated you before. Mm -hmm. And the other things come, the sex comes, the sex is more, you know, fulfilling. And, you know, yes, you can try everything with this person who you now feel so safe and trust and that you trust and that you have this deep connection with. Mm. Uh, but to put the sex first as that's going to be the thing that's going to hold on or keep our marriage together you got it wrong sis. I mean, <laughs> you know how many Cialis and Viagra commercials there are that's why those commercials exist because that sex ain't what it used to be <laughs> yeah Everybody's because body changes as you age the things that, that felt good before that worked for you before don't work you know, the ways you used to get excited are, you know, are, are changing. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Because the person that you marry today isn't the same person that, that's going to be next week or next month or next year. And I said this before that there was a tweet I posted that went viral. And the question was, and I asked my wife this, I usually ask her in, a te in text. And Clarence, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but I said, I ask my wife regularly, what can I do? for you today to make you feel loved. Like I did see that. Okay. See yeah. That. Yeah. So I text that to her every so often, not every day, but the rebuttal, most people say it was, well, if you really love her, why you got to ask her what? And I'm like, see, your mindset is off. Oh, that's the thing. So Especially I, women. We make that, that, that is so, again, you have to say what you want. There's a chapter in the book. <laughs> about called i want to know mm. and, and, and this and it, so if, if you haven't figured the reason one of the reasons we call it the rhythm of love is because every chapter title is the chat is the title it's of a song. a song and we we have a playlist that goes with the book it's a song yeah. so i want to know is the name of that chapter and by it's joe by yes, joe exactly. exactly and the per i wrote that chapter and it's because that's what i had to get her to tell me you know I, I'm not going to figure this out because we're just in proximity of one another. That doesn't mean that they're not things that I'm going to learn. I'm going to notice that I'm going to be able to read the signs, but it, it is you get, you've taken risks. I'm taking risks. If I'm <laughs> waiting on him to see that I left that magazine open with that particular ring show, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, send him a link and say, oh, this is cute. I didn't say I wanted it. I just said it was cute. You be like, oh, yeah, that is cute. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's not, It's very nice. I agree. Yes, you have to say what you want. And I had to learn that lesson, you know, the hard way. But, uh, <laughs> Look at you talking about the hard way. <laughs> Look at you talking about the hard way. <laughs> All right, I'll give you, I'll give you guys a story. And I've actually told this story before. Mm -hmm. Because that thing can also backfire on you because knowing saying I know what I want has to be clear because if a person's asking you what you want, you you got to tell them or say, I'm not sure. Or, you know, your communication has to be clear mm -hmm. for her birthday. One year, I asked her what you want for your birthday. And she said nothing. I said, OK, <laughs> I, 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 I can make that work. <laughs> I already know where you're going. Go ahead. <laughs> So I got her a card and, you know, her birthday came. I said, happy birthday. You know, I had the kids and, with the and, ha and then I and moved. My birthday was over. <laughs> <laughs> it was noon and my birthday was over. <laughs> we started moving on to all the rest of the errands and the. Yeah, I mean, I asked you what <laughs> you I'm, want. I'm getting more heated and heated by the moment. <laughs> 
So we just gonna go to Micro Center and <laughs> so we just bought and you know I realized it was I had he has a very good track record for having surprised me, having taken me to new places, you know, so many new things I've done with him before, you know, that I hadn't done before. Um buying the perfect you know earrings or whatever and so you know to me nothing was nothing nothing extravagant nothing special you know there were words tacked on the end of that nothing you know I don't need a big party I don't need a big to do but you know I do want to know that it's my birthday all day long Mm -hmm. I do want to know that you know that it's my birthday all day long and we're going to center things the, the day around you um and nothing, that's how specific I nothing means nothing he was like nothing <laughs> in the I, dictionary yeah. you look nothing up <laughs> i did i did i did more I did. than nothing i did something you bought her a car i bought her a right. car but i learned that i need to be a little bit more um uh, specific with my questions you know, I can't just say, what do you want for your birthday? She says nothing. I might have to probe a little bit more. I might have to ask a few more things and say, well, I mean, when you say nothing, do you mean you just want to, you don't want to do anything that day? Or is there some, you know, you just want to do something small? What, give me some more details or some examples of what you define <laughs> nothing, nothing as so that I can use that moving forward. So trust me, I won't be using that word on my birthday. <laughs> He won't even have to delve into that. That was a while ago. That was yeah, yeah, that was a while ago. Circling back to your point about that check-in you do with your wife, we do the a similar type of check-in. Just, you know, it's really brief. Are we good? Is everything good? You know, do you need to talk about something? You know, because sometimes in either you do or you don't detect a little difference in your spouse. Maybe they're not um laughing as hard at at the twitter jokes as they usually do or you know whatever the the thing they're they're giving you short brief answers when you try to talk to them and so there might be some signals that you can turn tune into to say i really need to check in but just in general having that mindset of knowing that your spouse is growing and changing every day and having experiences that are impacting them in ways that even they don't always know. And so having that explicit check-in, like I'm looking out for you right now, please tell me how, if I'm doing a good job looking out for you, if I can do something different. And mm-hmm. we, you know, that's a hallmark of our our relationship as well. It is. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I think, I think too, is like you said, the check-in, I was, do you know who Brene Brown is? Yes. 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 Okay. Brene yes. Brown. She got some good stuff. Yes. There was a, a TikTok I seen of her and she talked about how when her or her husband comes home, they say, <clears throat> babe, I'm only operating at 25% right now. Oh, yes. yes we've seen that one. Too. Okay. That yeah. One. Yeah. Recently. Uh huh. Yeah. And you talked about this on another show. I, I heard you talking about this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So talking about those things, I think that really sets the tone for when you come home making that transition <clears throat> from work to home yep you know totally does, totally does, yeah. totally and not assuming you know because i was a stay at home mom for a considerable amount of time and sometimes the spouse who's going outside to work can assume that oh you're home so everything you could have needed or done is right here for you you're not under the stress of a boss man or whatever, but no, that is, it's very stressful to be at home, to be with kids, to not have adult conversation, Mm -hmm. to, you know, feel like you're cooking a meal for somebody every two hours, (laughs) only for them to reject this. I don't like that. (laughs) For them to make a mess that you just cleaned up. So, you know, tuning into the vert reverse is the same. It, yes, going out to work and experiencing, you know, the things you do in, in the workplace 
um, is one thing, but also looking out for the spouse who may at one time or another not be going out in the workplace, but yeah. still working nonetheless. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I want to jump into this bonus round real quick because I want to make sure that I honor your time. Uh, to sure. these, there's no right or wrong answers. And I want to okay. ask individually. Okay. So, Clarence, what is the biggest mistake you see men make in relationships? Assuming that the woman that you married is the woman who you are still with. Mm. That's a huge mistake. You know, when you got her, she was one person. When five years later, she's a different person. And I think Yolanda said it, the, the not evolving yourself over time to be able to to connect with her where she is so uh, i think that's the biggest mistake i've seen in in a lot of the relationships that i've that i've known mm, that's good that's good yolanda what's the biggest mistake you see women making relationships so after not communicating their expectations which we already talked about because i think that's the number one um, is making assumptions and not communicating your expectations to, to him. Um, and actually, I don't know, after that, <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure that there's another one to add. I think that is the biggest one in a marriage relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can give you one. Uh -oh. You want you one? Have to give me one. I can oh, give you one. Oh, Maybe he... you'll spark me to think of another one. Okay. Yeah, he got another one. <laughs> connecting physical and connecting sex to the emotion can sometimes be very disheartening for a relationship. As a man, I'm not, I'm just learning, not now, but you know, I'm, I had to learn the connection that women have between how they feel and what they do. And because men, we can compartmentalize that thing real easily. We can say we can have the worst day and still come home and want to be intimate. Yep. And women have can have the worst day and it just affects their entire evening and their entire yep. night. And I and I wish that women would learn to be a little bit more disconnected. And men would learn to be a little bit more connected, if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. Have you read a book called um, Men Are Like Waffles, Women Are Like Spaghetti? So, no, but I, I heard I heard you reference it in, on a podcast the other day. It's so true. But it's so perfect. It's, so it's, it's a perfect because analogy. It's all interconnected for us. Um, and, yeah, I did, I did have to make that separation myself, too. Um, and, you know, realize that intimacy with my husband is, um, is, you know, a game changer for how we relate on any other topic, um, that it is, it maintains that emotional connection with him. Like women are looking for the emotional connection to happen first. Sometimes I need you to hear me. I need you to see me what I'm what I'm going through in this moment. And sometimes, you know, the Tension. turning it around and, and, and putting place in the intimacy first. Um, and, you know, I had to be careful how I say that because I'm never saying that a woman should have sex when, when she doesn't want to, right. this is a whole, you know, a mindset I'm talking about for a woman that if right. if she you know with her own agency and her own control of that situation is saying i'm going to place intimacy with my husband over you know this 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 stuckness that i feel that i i i'm, I'm having a hard time penetrate through and sometimes you can meet each other through sex and through intimacy, through physical intimacy, through, you know, leads to sometimes that emotional intimacy that you want in a moment. I wouldn't say that's how you conduct a marriage. Correct. Because he Correct. needs to be coming to meet you as I, well. But it's, it's got to be both moments, directions. Sometimes I'm like, we're so stuck. Let's, you know, let's come at this from a different angle mm -hmm. and stop 
use use less of our words because most of the time it's like use your words <laughs> this time yeah. we call these a little few words <laughs> fewer words um but that also leads me to the other answer to your question that i had which is women sometimes place the responsibility for their happiness on their mate as well and it's really not your mate's responsibility to make you happy. They add to your happiness. They add, you know, they they use your love language to love on you. And all of these things are bonuses on top because if you have a hole, you know, in you where you're, not, you don't have contentment, you don't, you don't love yourself. You are feeling like, you know, are dumping on yourself or your self-esteem is low and they keep pouring on top it's just it's just gonna go right out of the bottom and you're never going to get to this happy place where you want to be and it also sets up opportunities for resentment because there's going to be times when he's going through things it's been stressful at work et cetera, et cetera. you you got financial issues where he can't be at his best and he can't be doing you know all the loving and you know anything we say for you know, men do this and women do this i think the reverse is always true <laughs> you know it's the it's right. so hard and fast rule. You know, yeah. women need to, men need to take that into account as well. But, you know, each of us coming into the relationship saying, I'm a happy whole person on my own. And what we're doing is we're just building on top of that. Yes, I love that 100%. Whoever want to answer first, it's not a problem. But I want to ask you the same question. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Ooh. It, it didn't teach me a lot of good things, really. Um, I'm, I'm, I hate to say, I, I, you know, it taught me loyalty, yes. Um, but it also taught me to hide the truth. Um, and it from from people who care about me, um, that I had to go through. You know, personal life stays at home, and you go through it on your own, and y'all work it out, or y'all don't. Um, um. But it also taught me the importance of having, you know, God at the center of your marriage um, and that um, there is a lot that you can persevere through if you're leaning on him. Mm -hmm. um, and then the flip coin of that is that doesn't mean God wants you to, to go through, you know, hell to just allow yourself to be in a hellish situation. Mm -hmm. So uh a lot of coins coin flipping that i learned <laughs> a lot of heads and tails yeah <laughs> exactly a lot of heads and tails um but a lot of heads we you know we had a loving loving household mm. what about you clarence so i learned how the importance of lifting your wife up that's what i learned I come from my, it's my dad and it's me and my two brothers. So, my, so my, my mom is the only woman in our house. So my dad is heavy on make sure your mom has what she needs. Don't upset your mother, you know, manage her things. So, you know, he pushed on us how important it was to take care of her as the woman of our house. So, when we when I got married, that was heavily in my focus that, you know, she needed to be taken care of. She needed to be and I, people who use the word adulted over. I, I'm not saying that this is this is more substantial than that. This is making sure that, you know, she doesn't have to take trash out. You got that trash. You're going to make sure that gets taken care of, you know. You're going to make sure that bathroom is clean. She, you, you're not going to ask her to clean the bathroom. She got enough to do. You need to be doing these things. So whether it was me or whether it was our kids or things like that, you know, make sure your mother is is taken care of to the level she wants to be taken care of. So that's that, that's what I learned about in, in, in watching my parents be married. Mm, love it. Last question. There's no right or wrong answer. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Oh, yeah. I've seen you ask this question a couple of times. 
And I, I've been wondering if you were going to ask me this question yeah. and I wasn't sure what my answer was going well, to be. I think it's easier to love someone else. I think I you can't love someone else really effectively until you love yourself first, really. But just, you know, all playing fields being even, it's easier to love someone else. You I agree. Know every, you know everything about, about yourself, yourself. <laughs> you know your good your horrible your thoughts your weaknesses so well and it's hard to give ourselves that grace to say you know you're doing the best you can you can but also push yourself to do you know more and better and improve and heal and grow right and you know you're in it with yourself. It it's is. all in. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know for sure. so I I would agree with her 100. I definitely think it's being able to love someone else because there's some gaps there in your information about that person. So you got a set of things that you say, you know, I know these things and I love these things about them, but you know, you don't know that they serial kill on the weekends when you're not around. You just don't. You just don't know that. So, but it, but but you know that about yourself. So you are it's much more difficult for you to love yourself because you know so much about you and know so like, much. Like you said, that marriage holds up a mirror. Not only does the marriage once you have kids, the kids are holding up a mirror even more <laughs> so because they're just being just like you. The full body mirrors. Those are full body mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> Mirrors. Um, oh and my so, God. Yes, yes. Yeah. You're seeing your your weaknesses. You're seeing your flaws. You're seeing your struggles, and you're like, oh, yeah. you how can anybody love? Me? You realize how much personality is genetic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like, why should it be? <laughs> I was specifically trying to teach you not to take that <laughs> And here you are exhibiting it. Yeah, I mean, how many times yes. have you heard? You're just like your father. Just like it, yeah. The apple You're just like your mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Oh my yeah. God. So, yeah. <laughs> this has been a, a, a another phenomenal episode. Thank you both so much for taking some time out of your day to be guests. I want to uh, acknowledge you both for having the courage to share your story, to write the book. There's a lot of people who start and they don't finish. Uh, so I want to acknowledge you for starting Thank and you. finishing. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you. He's the finisher. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, hey, long as y'all know y'all roles, right? <laughs> Chapter two, chapter two, <laughs> chapter two, <laughs> chapter two. Yes. And, and I want to acknowledge you for the going on 27 years. Am I correct? 27 years? 27 yes. years on Wednesday. Yes. Yes. So I want to acknowledge you for that as well, for staying the course once again. Um, mm -hmm. And just being an example and just sharing your story with everyone and stuff like that. So there's no excuse. So Brave Arts community, those who listen and those who watch and there's no excuse to say, I I can't find a healthy relationship. You got one right in front of you. So Thank you. Uh, there's no excuses. I don't want to at you. least one right in front of you because there's it's, another there's, one. There's two. You know, there's two right in so front of you. Thank <laughs> you for doing this on a weekly basis. We're bringing to what people need to hear um, to a place where they can come and and, and learn and grow. Yes. Yeah, big absolutely. time. Absolutely. For sure. Well, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you all. Give us your information. So it's been scrolling across the bottom down here the whole time. Yes. <laughs> you can go to our Linktree account, uh, and that gives you that gets you to everything that we that we are um, engaged in. But we what we what we encourage people to do is to come to our Sunday night show yes. on Twitch. Uh, we play some old school slow dance. You got to be a certain age. I, I'm not even going front. I'm not even going front. You got to be a certain age. Oh, a certain, your soul, your has, soul to has to be a certain age. <laughs> uh, we talk about stuff. We we, we interact with right. the audience. We just, you know, it's just a good time. Think of it like a, a virtual online quiet storm. That's what we're doing. Yes. The quiet storm online. So, you know, we have all kinds of contests. Who, the Battle of the falsettos. Whose voice never fails, right. the best of the worst singers, yes. you know, just all kind of stuff yes. that we do on there. Yeah. So yeah. come on That's, through, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's twitch.tv slash DJ C sharp. Yep. All one. 
Yeah, thank you for that because not only is this available in YouTube format, but it'll be available through the podcast too. So yes, I want to make sure that you share that so they get it. Yes. Into- okay, so if for people who can't see the link tree, mm-hmm. we are CYL Entertainment on Link. Oh, I, I mean, it's the, it's the website. You can go to CYLEntertainment.com. Yes, is where you can it's go. the website. Yes. Okay, and gotcha. And that's C there. like Clarence, Y like Yolanda, Lewis like our last name. Entertain. Entertain.com. Gotcha. Hey, right. thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.